Hey guys, my name is Pastor Ryan and welcome to Treeline Kids at Home. We're so excited to continue our series crossover this week. And so join us for service right now. Before we start service, like we do every week, let's go over our memory verse. So jump on up, get your thinking caps on, and let's get ready. Shout it at me, three, two, one, go. If you guys got that, awesome. We're seriously so proud of you guys for, for learning God's word. And if you didn't get it, let's go over it again so, so you can get it next week. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Ephesians 3.20. Let's read that one more time together. God is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine. Ephesians 3.20. Now let's continue with our next part of our service, which is worship. So we love worship here at Treeline Kids. So jump up to your feet, stretch, and get ready to praise Jesus together. Oh, you are God, and we lift you up. We'll keep singing, we'll keep praising, we won't stop giving all we got. Cause you're worthy.
now, like I say, every week, we're going to go into a time of worship. And like I said last week, this song might not even have dance motions, and that's totally fine. The reason we did that is on purpose. We want you guys to focus on the song, on the lyrics, and what God is speaking to you in those moments. Maybe some of the thoughts that he gives you, the things you think about that don't seem like your thoughts, they're God trying to speak to you through worship. So let's just take a time and spend a minute in Jesus' presence while we worship. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard tender whispers of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're continue our series crossover. This is our third week in the series. We're super excited about this one. This is about a story of three guys named Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego. These were three guys who did everything they could to worship God at all costs. And so we look at this time, we're going to see about a king who told them, you can't really do that. And there's punishment if you don't listen to me. And so let's jump in the video right now and learn about it. What up, little cheeky nuggets? It's me, Carl. <laughs> cool, right? <laughs> Whatever. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Introducing your host, Carl. And your co-host, Passy. Where we learn, where we grow, and we talk about Jesus. Once again, welcome to Grow TV. Hey there, sick intro, right? <laughs> Me and myself. Not a big deal. It is a big deal. Whatever. 
Want to see something cool? Check this out. Pretty fly, right? It's a cactus. What the French call cacti. Yeah, I know French. I'm very cultured. I'm a very complex and intriguing individual. Hey. Whoa, are you okay? Yeah, I do that sometimes. I had a respect for gravity and all. Sure. So I wanted to come by and ask if you're all right. Oh, uh, for sure. Never been better. <laughs> Soup's all chill-tastic. Soup's all chill-tastic? Soup's all chill-tastic. Super chill and fantastic. Did you make that up? It's a thing I heard. It's most definitely not. W-Y-S. What does that mean? Whatever you say. See, this is what I'm talking about. You're not making any sense. <laughs> well, maybe that's just because you don't speak cool. Cool isn't a language. <laughs> oh, it is. I'm speaking it. Oh, really? So how do you learn to speak cool? <laughs> Gassy, you don't learn it. Who learns to speak you? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You see, being cool is, it's like a, well, it's like if you did, um, <laughs> what am I saying? You can't explain it. All right, so it's lunchtime, and I'm guessing cool people don't eat regular food, right? Of course not. Cool people eat brioche buns, squid caviar, and uh, gelatin. Ah, that's too bad. I brought too much food, and I figured you'd want to share. Really? What do you got? Peanut butter and tuna fish sandwiches, your favorite. Really? With seaweed potato chips. Really? All right, I'll have some, please. Are you sure? I thought you were too cool. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not cool. I'm just really hungry. All right, here you go. Thanks. <laughs> yes. You know, Carl, you gotta be careful with this whole cool thing. In what way? I'm just saying. If you start worrying about being cool and doing what everyone else is doing, it might lead you to a bad place. Oh wow, I never thought of that before. Isn't there a story in the Bible like that? Yep, the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The people of the city would start worshiping idols and they would gather to bow to them. But the three of them chose not to bow down. Oh no, isn't that gonna get them in trouble? You're right, and it did. Even after the king and his officials threatened them and told them to bow, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego chose to honor the one and only God. That's right. Then the king was like, well, I'm going to throw you in the fire. And they're like, well, we don't care because God, he's going to save us. And even if God doesn't, we're still going to worship him. Exactly. Then the king had them turn up the fire seven times hotter than usual. So hot that the guard that put them in there died from the flames. I forgot about that. What happened next? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were thrown in, and guess what? They didn't burn up. They even began walking around inside the furnace. And when the people on the outside looked in, they saw a fourth person. A lot of people think that was God. How cool is that? So cool. So when the king saw them, they pulled them out. They looked and saw that none of them had been burnt, not even their clothes. It was a miracle. And from then on, the king decided all the people in the land would worship the one true God. Wow. I would say those three were cool. Yeah, but not that kind of cool. What do you mean? Well, sometimes being cool means doing what everyone else is doing. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't do that. They knew there was only one God, and they wouldn't bow to any idol, no matter how much trouble they were going to get in. I guess you're right. I need to be cool just like them. It's just... It's just what? It's gonna be tough to do that. I mean, I don't know if I could be thrown into a furnace and have joy like they did. I mean, I just get scared thinking about it. It's okay, Carl. Just like God didn't allow them to be alone in the furnace, God also won't allow you to be alone in your life either. Even the scary parts. Well, that's good to know. Yep, and we can never forget that God gives us extraordinary courage. That's a good point, Cassie. I'd also like to add, Wait, what? Oh. That's our big idea! Today's big idea is God gives us extraordinary courage. This is a big one, so let's say it on the count of three. One. Two. Three. God gives us extraordinary courage! Woohoo! Yeah! <laughs> Today we learned that being cool really isn't important. Right, Carl, and that God will always be with us through the tough times. Well, kids, thanks for watching. Make sure to avoid any furnaces, because <laughs> they're hot, really hot. All right, thanks for watching.
Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. So as you saw in the video, we talked about these three guys named Radshak, Meshach, and Abednego. Basically, the way you heard the story too is this king kind of said, hey, no one's allowed to worship God anymore. Like you can't do that. You got to worship me. I'm the king. Here's my statue. It's super gold and awesome. Worship that. And so they all went down to worship and these three wouldn't do that. They said like, we refuse to because you're not God. Like our God is God. And so why, like we want to worship him with everything that we are. We're not going to bow down to you. And they basically gave them opportunities. Like, are you sure? Like we'll literally kill you. And they're like, we got it. It's fine. We'll, we'll die for, for God. And so what ends up happening is they take them to this fire and not only was it like this regular fire, they said, turn it up seven times as hot. So, so hot. The person that's prepared preparing the fire died from it being so hot. And so finally they throw all these people in and you're expecting these three to die, right? No, what actually happens is all of a sudden they look into this fire and there's four people there and they're like, how the heck is there a fourth? So, so we imagine God was there with them. And so finally he goes, okay, we need, we need to cut this off. They cut the fire, they come out and the king realizes, wow, like your God is real. He literally spared you from this hottest fire imaginable, but also like they weren't burned, like not even their clothes were like crispy. Like God protected them so much. And the great thing that we learned this week is our, our big idea is that God gives us extraordinary courage in every situation when maybe we need God's help. Uh, maybe we need God to get us through something that's a little scary, just like, like this virus or get us through maybe some weird situations with our families or maybe just we're really... Um, scared of going into our next grade at school or new teachers or new schoolwork, whatever, God will give you courage. So pray for that and spend the time and talk to God. Talking to God doesn't need to be weird. doesn't need to be like, Jesus, thank you. It literally can just be, God, like, what's up? Like, I'm afraid. I need your help. Um, it's kind of weird in this classroom right now. Can you just help me? Give me courage. And, and that's how we speak to God. Just, just, we can casually say, God, I want you. Give me courage so that I can live my life, but I can live my life for you. So I can be unashamed of the gospel. And so that's what this whole week is about, is about courage and to see what these three guys in the Bible did to make sure that God, um, that everyone loved God, to show them that they, regardless of what they would do, they would never stop worshiping God. And so we want that for you guys as well. So now grab your mom and dad, grab uh, some sort of adult. Let's jump into discussion questions right now. What did King Nebuchadnezzar build and what did he want the people to do with it? Why were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego thrown into the fiery furnace? How did King Nebuchadnezzar know that the three friends actually worshiped God? Read Daniel 3, 26 to 28. What happened because the three friends stood up to the king? Have you ever been told to do something that God might not want you to do? What do you think you might have done if you were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? How do we know God will give us courage when we need it? Thank you guys again so much for joining us for Treeline Kids this week for our third part of Crossover. We're so thankful for you guys just getting to know God with us, for us to kind of share a little bit of who God is and what he wants to do in your life. So again, we're so thankful for you. We're so excited to see you guys next week here on Treeline Kids. Have a great week, guys.